Hey, everybody. Thank you for being here at All Access Live. Happy June. We are just here June 1st, and uh, I was just told that it's uh, it's Pride Month, so we're going to be prideful, and uh, and we're going to share lots of positive stories. But before we get started with any of that, I'm going to ask a couple of things from you. Number one, if you're watching this on any place else other than YouTube, do me a favor. Go to the link below. Go to youtube.com slash Live with Kevin Rankin. From there, you can hit the subscribe button. You can hit the bell to be notified when my next upcoming guests appear. And you can also go back through and look at the other 250 episodes that I've done since May of 2020. I would appreciate it. And if you like this video, that you can also hit the little like button. And uh, John and Nicole will appreciate the fact that you appreciated it as well. So before we get started, I want to thank my sponsors of Five Star Guitars. Five Star is based in Beaverton, Oregon. There they are right there. If you order from 5starguitars.com slash allaccesslive and use the promo code of allaccess15, you're going to save 15% off of everything you see. Plus, since there's no sales tax in Oregon, you're going to save even more money. Along with another local supporter, I've got Rhythm Traders, the greatest drum shop on the West Coast. They've been around for over 30 years. If you go to rhythmtraders.com and let them know that All Access Live sent you, you'll get 10% off. Again, no sales tax if you're outside of Oregon, so you're going to save a bunch of dough. And uh, they've got repairs, and they've got lessons, and uh, all sorts of great clinics as great professionals come through. So let Rhythm Traders know that I sent you. And finally, the greatest music store on the West Coast and probably in the country, the best selection of vinyl that you can find, Music Millennium. MusicMillennium.com. We'll find, uh, you'll get vinyl, you'll have cassettes, you can even get uh, the CDs and those old box sets. So uh, go to MusicMillennium.com. Let Terry Courier know that we sent you. Now... <clears throat> My next guests, uh, I was very fortunate to have gotten to know these guys over the last several, probably 20 years. Um, I was just at their wedding. And if you've ever been to a dynamic wedding that was full of rock stars and uh, local visionaries, but um, full of spirit and positivity, I will tell you from the beginning of this wedding all the way through the reception, I felt like I was part of something really special. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this union, their upcoming projects, and uh, look at that. Oh, you know what? I I, um, I probably should have announced that uh, while I have John Thayer and Nicole DaCosta here, yeah, you were just married. So, John, did you want to actually assume the DaCosta name now, even with your rich family heritage? Did you want to just assume uh, John DaCosta? Yeah, John, John DaCosta is a, a nice ring, but unfortunately, the name's already taken by Nicole's father. So oh, okay. I'm, nice. I'm going to go ahead and stay with the uh, the John Thayer name. Yeah, you and do? Uh, Nicole decided, I think the day before the wedding, she said, John, I don't think I'm going to be Nicole Thayer. That's a hard, a hard conversation the day before. Yeah. It and I said, I said, honey, I said, honey, 24 hours notice. This is not good. <laughs> this is not good. But anyway, um, I sir, I quickly got over that. And uh, I think Nicole DeCoste is a cool name. Yeah. And she's got a great brand that she's developed over the years. And so, hey, let's go with it. Yeah, man. Well, you know, that's kind of the thing right now for power couples, right? You guys to keep that identity. There's the brand that's already there. You know, the power couple thing is is something that um, I really had never even thought about until my girlfriend, who you met at the wedding, was wow. saying that, that that is something that she seeks, not for the actual power behind it, but that there's a, so much that you can accomplish as a unit. And uh, man, I, I've known this about both of you guys. John, I've known you for at least 20 years now, wow. um, and you've always been really inspiring in terms of just going after not just uh, your musical um, endeavors, but you know, you've been a f fantastic, successful businessman. Um, you're a very kind person. But then I've also known Nicole completely separately as a, as a local musician, but also a, a broadcaster, uh, somebody that brings a lot of attention to the positive sides of Portland. Together, you guys made this union, and I didn't get to talk to you about this at the wedding, but I felt like the power greater than one's self the unit that you guys made is you know is really like portland grew in magnificence during your union you know and so this is not here to just to blow you guys up but it's it's um it's amazing to watch you together because i've never seen you happier john it's a beautiful thing to see you guys together and uh and nicole i don't think i've ever seen you not happy which is <laughs> 
<laughs> has no, nothing to do no. with John. No, just kidding. No, it's so cute. I love how you keep saying union because it sounds so serious and scary, yeah. but we just had a February 25th, we got married. It was just the most fun day ever. I don't think I've ever felt so um, calm and just in my skin and just surrounded by friends and family. And like having you play drums behind us, oh my out, I was like, this is awesome. what life is about, right? I mean, I was honored, honestly. Th thank you, uh, man. Joe Megas, I appreciate you asking me to play with the band. You, what a band you guys had. First of all, Dance All Days is probably the perfect band to have at any wedding because from top to bottom, they play everything that people know, that there's some obscure stuff in there as well. And then you get lined up with John and Nicole and some other guy on guitar, the guy with the longer hair. Um, I, I recognized him. Was he, um, was he in... Uh, a, look, a cover band or a tribute band or something? I think he's in a band called Kiss. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, as as a matter of fact, you know what, Nicole, listen, I, because we were just, John and I were just talking about this. This is one of my favorite pictures from the wedding. This guy right here. Oh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, that is so funny. I, mean, I That's it right there. I mean, life is about just laughing, funny moments. Who the heck? I mean, this is. I mean, my props to the photographer, Jessica Hill, captured all the moments that I would have forgot, you know, happened. So, um, oh, man. so cool. And just so, like you've mentioned, when you looked around the room and I looked around the room, we're coming out of a pandemic, right? Yeah. We've all been cooped up, miserable. It was really the first time we all got out, you know, um, yeah. to spend time together and to see so many different, like everyone in that room we met for a reason. Yeah. Like John and I talked about that a lot. Like there's a reason why that photographer <laughs> was there. Cause I met him here and you're playing drums behind me. And I met John 23, 24 years ago. And this is my husband. It was just a wild come together of it. Yeah. You know, you mentioned um, how sort of eclectic and, and unique it was. One thing about that wedding yeah. is sometimes when you go to a traditional wedding, you know, it's, they're very strict about, okay, there's the bride's side and the groom's side. At that wedding, the the ushers actually were telling people it doesn't matter really, yeah. other than family. You know, when you had the family right up front, everybody that knows you guys wants to support you guys as a couple, and so it didn't matter that you know we sat on one side or the other. But one thing that I felt so blown away by was your orchestra, the quartet that you guys had there. Mm -hmm. How did you find them? And and I'm telling you, man, this was like the most incredible performance at a wedding I've ever seen. Well, that's a great uh, point, Kevin. Um, Adaya, uh, the gal who heads up the quartet, she actually does a lot of work with Trinity Episcopal Church, okay. which is the venue, the cathedral where we had the ceremony. And they do a lot of the Baroque concerts and, and a lot of Christmas holiday uh, music concerts, et cetera. But her and her three um, uh, you know, partners in, in the quartet are just excellent. And, uh, you know, originally, short story, we picked out a bunch of contemporary rock songs that we wanted the quartet to play before the service. We thought maybe we could get together, you know, get away with it in a very proper, you know, uh, ecumenical Episcopal church. But the last minute, the music director called me and he said, John, I've, I've looked at this list. You know, he had to go through the list. And he said, I don't, I don't think it's going to fly. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Norwegian Wood by the Beatles, um, Eleanor Rigby. We had a couple of Kiss songs in there, uh, some, some classical Baroque renditions of, of some Aerosmith. Yes. Um, Unfortunately, we, we weren't able to get away with it. But my cousin Bobby and his wife Stephanie um, sang an Irish uh, hymn that I, I picked out. And I, I really was shedding tears uh, during that uh, performance because the string quartet it was just such a heartfelt moment and, and the vocals and the harmonies between Stephanie and Bobby were just wonderful. Oh. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Kevin, because that really was one of the highlights of the, of the service, the ceremony for me. Yeah, me too. I, you yeah. weren't the only one shedding tears. Everybody yeah. in the entire church was, was just really flummoxed. Um, I, you know, I got to share a couple pictures from that wedding. Cause this really, oh, if, so if, nice. if, if, if somebody wants to see, the picture of, of the perfect wedding. Look at this, oh this your, your wedding party. Look at this incredible church too. But um, yeah, this is if you're gonna if you're gonna take a snapshot of Aww. the uh, the greatest you know looking wedding and throw that into a magazine. That's that's stunning. There's this guy that absolutely got it from me. I uh, <laughs> you know I this that picture to me should be on the cover of every wedding planning magazine. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> And then you've got this. Oh my God! Yeah, they, those the, the the kiss in front of these doors. There's um, that's an album cover right there. You know, oh, when you when, 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 
And, and 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 of course the the greatest um, there's something really special about black and white. This one tells it all. They've got both of your guys' personality. You've got people that are just revering you as you're walking out. That's right after you said your your uh, I do's. And uh, yeah, man, this is that's where the party just began. So that was um <laughs> that was something else. I I gotta tell you, so fun, a little walk down memory lane. I love it. And like <laughs> honestly, up at the altar, I'm just trying not to faint cry or you know something else <laughs> like i was just oh. holding it together because it that song when the song started playing and the yeah. string quartet came in it adds strings to any song and it just becomes emotional so That's it was kind of like oh yeah this is my wedding right now this is my oh my you know i don't yeah. know how we did it john i don't know how we did it <laughs> you know, for, cool. for, i was just thinking you know there are some people that watch this that don't know you guys maybe they're outside the area um People should know a little bit more, baby, about your backstories. You know, like I said, I've known John for a long time. Uh, John, I used to play drums with you, John, on projects that you had in your solo yes. band. Uh, yes. And Nicole, you know, um, I knew you around peripherally through the music scene as well. But um, it's not that you guys are just musicians. Um, we should, okay, let me start with, with John, right? So, uh, John, your whole family has been very musical for quite some time. And, and, uh, if you don't mind, I'd love to know a little bit about your backstory, even like prior to like you and your brother becoming prominent in the scene, um, all the way back to General Thayer. I mean, it's amazing how much sort of history that you have in this area. So you want to talk a little bit about family origin here? Sure. So uh, we grew up, I uh, had four siblings um, and a great mother and father, loving parents. Uh, we grew up in Beaverton on a five and a half acre, I would call it a gentleman's farm. And we had sheep and we had horses and we had cherry trees, apple trees, pear trees. We had blackberry bushes and vines. So my mom would have us pick apples and, and pick berries. And then she'd make homemade straw or uh, blackberry pies and homemade apple pies. So it was a very idyllic childhood. Our dad um, was a, a successful business person. Uh, he was also a veteran of World War II and honored um, for helping to liberate a, a Jewish um, German concentration camp in, in uh, outside of Linz, Austria, the Gunskirchen Lager camp. So he had a lot of trying, um, you know, emotional stories from that era. But long story short, um, we had great parents. My mother was very musical. Uh, she played the violin. She sang. All of us kids sang in the choirs at, in uh, high school and in junior high school and even in grade school. Tommy, my brother, who's the lead guitarist for Kiss, he played saxophone. And just a quick story, um, he really wanted to play the guitar. So when he was a sophomore in high school, he went to my mother and he said, Mom, I really want to play guitar. And my mom said, well, you're not planning on giving up the saxophone. He goes, no, no, I don't think so. So she made a deal and she said, Tommy, I'll buy you your first electric guitar, but you have to promise me that you'll continue to play saxophone all the way through high school, through your senior year. And he played in the stage band and the, and the uh, marching band and, and all the different um bands with the saxophone, but he started playing guitar and really took that up. Um, last day of school, the last class was band class, and he finished the class, left his saxophone on the table, walked out, and never looked back. Oh, my God. I love that. I, 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 where's, your, where's your saxophone? He says, well, I left it at school, and uh, he went back to try to find it. It was gone. So that, oh, was, what? that was the end of his, uh, his marching band days, and, and he kind of took off a different direction. But Anyway, I really was into music, but I never really, um, I never really took advantage of, of that aspect of my life until I was in my 30s. And uh, I met up with my good friend Tom Holland and Barry Bender, and we started a, a small uh, garage band called Catch Club. And Barry's brother, Byron, was the bass player. So we started playing some clubs around town. And Jeff Lebansky, who was kind of a player in those days in Portland and down in Salem, he invited us to open up for him. So we became kind of his opener band for about three years and got some exposure and had a lot of fun. But anyway, one thing led to another. I took some guitar lessons uh, down at uh, Apple Music. And then um, I started writing songs. I really had a this desire to write my own music. So I started to write songs and, and record. And then I put um, a couple of original bands together. And I think, Kevin, that's when you played on some shows, quite a few shows, actually. Maybe some studio work as well. Yeah, and, uh, just kind of kind of went from there. So uh, my brother Tommy and I started a small record label called Eon Records, maybe 15 years ago, or maybe even longer than that. And uh, that just 
was one aspect of my life that I really enjoy. It's kind of, kind of the creative side of my being. And, um, it's, it's, uh, it's been really worthwhile over the years. And I met so many great people, including yourself, Kevin, uh, you know, pursuing that aspect of my, of my life. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful to, uh, my music, um, endeavors and all, all the great people I've met along the way, including Nicole. That's yeah. Is uh, that how you guys met? Nicole, yeah. you want to tell, tell the, the Reader's Digest version of the story? <laughs> Please do. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. I am at work. So that's, yeah. that's a little spotty. Um, oh, do you want to tell people where you're at work so that uh, they understand? Oh yeah. I'm like literally in a bunker under the coin tower right now. So um, I work at, at coin six and uh, Portland CW here in, in downtown Portland. So yeah, it's, it's very, very fun. I'm excited every day when I walk in the building, but sometimes we don't get the best reception. Um, yeah, no, I met, I met John a long time ago uh, because of music. That's why the wedding was so cool to look around the room and all these cool artsy people that we know were all together. Like 20 years later, it was really neat. Um, so I was in high school. I was a 15 year old kid. I didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> and uh, John had had met my family playing golf one day. And, and my dad had mentioned that my daughter loves music. She's writing all these songs. She's starting to record stuff. She just needs some, some help recording. Like, what does she do? Where does she go? How does she put it all together? And um, they were they were matched up playing golf that day. It was just perfect. And, and you know, and John Thayer said something to John DaCosta about, uh, well, let, let me meet the girl. Let's see what we can do. So we all met at a, a Chili's restaurant. Remember Chili's? Oh, so, of course. I mean, that's where every good story starts. <laughs> right. <laughs> every relationship should start with the Chili's. Yep. I mean, if you can get past Chili's. Um, yeah, no, we met. I was literally a kid. I said, hi, nice to meet you. And I write songs and, and John came over just so nice. I mean, why did this guy who's a few years older than me, right? Why did he come over to help me write songs? But we just, we became such fast friends and we were writing good songs. Like this was like, you know, it was, it was really fun. I would, I've never been so energized as kind of that, you know, that period of time of just songs were like flowing through me. Um, and John would help me. We would record some things and I would show up to high school out there at Jesuit high school. And before class, I would press play so people could hear like the new song. And I mean, as a kid, I'm just like, is this super dorky or is this like super cool? <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> but, um, but we were having a really good time and, and fast forward, uh, I don't know, two decades. <laughs> and now, uh, now we're married and it, it's pretty cool. So yeah, just, you never know, you know, uh, that's, you know, I was, I, I was, I was picturing the, the two Johns on the golf course, and as John Nacosta is asking John Thayer, hey, you know, my daughter's really into music. Yeah. Um, wh where does she go? Who yeah. does she meet? Yeah. yeah. And so I was, I was imagining he probably didn't think um, that he was matchmaking as he spoke right then, <laughs> you know, but. Um, no, not even close. You know, it, but, not you know, having known you guys both for a long time, and you know, we all have the friends that have been single maybe for a while, and you think, oh, you know what? It's sad that they're single, right? Because you know that they'd be a great partner for someone. Uh, wow. I don't think there's a person out there that hasn't known you guys individually and thought, they are so great together. You know, as wonderful as you guys are as individuals, seeing you guys together, uh, you know, you can just see that the sum is greater than, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? That, that saying, yeah. it's true about you guys. Um, you know, it, it's funny that you were talking to Cole about, you know, just um, about just your your energy with your classmates and asking them and uh, and where you're working right now. I wanted to share something really quick because you provided me your sizzle reel from work. And well, if yeah, anybody it's from, if, it's from if, last week, it's, it's uh, they just put it together last week. So it's like a little minute of our, our new morning show. Yes, yeah. I love this. So we're, let's talk about your morning show in a second. I got to share with people. They need to see this. If, if you want to see Nicole at work, check this out. Gotta get stretched out. It's early in the morning. Show me what to do. All right. <laughs> Never have to lift powdered sugar. <laughs> April Fool's! Welcome to Jenny Becker's Bee Boutique in beautiful Cannon Beach. Punch it back. Six, seven. Guys, come down to Al. They, they're hooking you up. If I can do this, you definitely can do this. <laughs> I have 
had to challenge one of their best movers to a packing contest. Don't do it yourself, okay? Come here. Hey, Michael. Hey, Ashley, what's up? Ah, now look, you talk about your family in the shows. I gotta ask you really quick before we go, how does your family take that? Because I talk about my family here and my mom has been threatening to sue me. <laughs> oh, we have the same mom. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> Oh my God, that is so fun! And you, really, you and Ashley together are such peas in a pod because you have look like you have the same energy. And, she and is the best. She just moved here a couple months ago um, from the Chicago area just for this show that we launched um, on Portland CW called Everyday Northwest. So every day from nine until ten a.m., Ashley's holding it down in the studio, and I'm running around town gathering fun stories and and we're just tossing content your way. We just want to share Portland and remind people why Portland's so awesome. Because I think it's been uh, slipping a little bit the last uh, two years. Not I'm, sure if you noticed. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. John and I were just talking about this before we started the show. Um, Saturday, I spent all day at TEDx Portland at the Moda Center. And oh. I was so inspired, man. I, I, and I don't know if you were there, but there were 29 segments, right? And, and so many of these presentations were so positive and directed about uh, to, towards, like, reclaiming Portland and bringing Portland to a light that internationally and nationally people can see that, um, you know, the things that brought people here originally, they're still there. We just have to like bond together. Uh, there were so many awesome performances, music performances from like Pink Martini. Diggable Planets was playing at 10 a.m. It was amazing. You know, but Death Cab for Cutie and Portugal the Man. Um, but a lot of these presentations were just like that. They were about, um, you know, outside Portland, the media portrays Portland as having, um, you know, this, uh, this, you know, unfortunately, like uh, exploding homeless problem and crime. And unfortunately, right now, a lot of American cities are dealing with that. Uh, but the thing is, I think the pandemic probably contributed to a lot of the uh, disparity and a lot of like this disconnect between humans and, and people. The connectivity part of this, that was the real focus of TEDx. I know that's the best thing about you and the shows too, Nicole, because the stories are so positive. You know, yeah. I, I stopped watching the news years ago because everything I see on the news was outside my control, right? There was so much negativity. And, and what you do is bring all these beautiful stories about connecting people and finding the brightness and, and joy. So that's gotta be the greatest gig ever. Honestly, like John can attest to this. Like I am so excited to go to work every day because every day is different. I don't know if I'm gonna be at the expo center at a cool event or I'm on a Ferris wheel reporting from the fair or someone stops by the office or I just get a cool call that I think this is a really neat story. Let's have you on the show next week. Like it's always different, always changing. There's no assembly line here. It's kind of like, what should we do next week? <laughs> you know, so if people do have story ideas, I always recommend, you know, reaching out that NicoleDeCosta.com contact form. And I'd love to talk to you because that's what life's about is sharing stories. And if you don't tell us about it, how will we know? You know, uh, absolutely. You know, this show for me, honestly, my podcast here, that's been something that that I never expected to bring me so many experiences from so many different people. And, uh, you know, each one has, it, of course, every person on the planet has a story. But every time I walk away from these conversations, my perspective about maybe their their history, yeah, I had the, the singer from the Sugar Hill Gang on a couple of days ago. And uh, Master G, this guy had this incredible story about the very first, you know, hip hop record ever. And, and that scene was something that I knew nothing about before, right. you know, but, uh, but I've been thinking about it nonstop for the last 48 hours. <laughs> cool. it, you, know, the, you know, the positive side of stuff, John, I mean, really, I, I got a chance to take a peek at some of your new music, some of the stuff you had coming out. And that's absolutely the direction that you're going. I mean, I really felt like that's the angle and not the angle, but really is, it seems to be the approach that you're really trying to present with your music. Sure. Well, you know, as you mentioned, Kevin, there's so much um, unrest and, and there's a lot of injustice and, and there's this empowerment movement and this movement to include and be more inclusive and, and just spreading love. You know, in this video that I produced, maybe we can watch watch it, but it's really a, a story about bringing people together and trying to find commonality versus all of the differences that we you know, we're, we're dealing with politics and race and climate change and all these different things that are so divisive. But 
On the other hand, if we're really going to make it together, which is the name of the song, yeah, we have to come together. We've got to find commonality. And I think it starts with each person. You know, we can't rely on Congress or the president or some organization. Those all help, obviously, but it's an individual thing. I think at the bottom, at the end of the day, we all need to do our part. And I think if everybody takes on that challenge, you know, it's going to be a better world. I, I completely agree. Do you guys sit and plan this approach, you know, together when you're at the end of the, your days and you sit back and you think, you know, Nicole, I think we could just, you know, as, as a couple, we can go out there and we could take this thing by the horns. And <laughs> no, <laughs> I think our energy kind of feeds off each other. And I've yeah. always said, and this is kind of dates me a little bit, but there was a TV commercial years ago by General Electric and the General Electric slogan was, um, we bring good things to life. Yeah. And I, I've always said, Nicole is a lot like General Electric. She brings oh. good things to life. <laughs> and, and that inspired me and made me a better person and made me whole yeah. uh, by having this relationship and now this bond and this marriage partnership with, with Nicole DaCosta. I just love her. That's oh my gosh. I did not know what we were going to talk about on this <laughs> podcast, but you guys, I could just sit here all night. This is uh, this is good stuff. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've said this before. You know, I, I definitely, I think that if we watch the news, if we look around, we could, we could choose to find stuff that would bum us out, you know, but I'm still thinking a lot about that wedding. I, you know, just right after that wedding, I was fortunate to get out, to go off and, and do some travel with my girlfriend. I was, I got to, to go and do the eighties cruise with the band. And so, um, on that sort of isolated bubble, right? We're out there in the middle of the Caribbean and the ship, and there were 3,500 other people that were just focused on the, the, you know, how things felt to them in the eighties. It was, you know, Nicole, I know that you were not even, you weren't even conceived of then, but uh, the, <laughs> no, you know, but, but, you know, back when life was simpler, right. You could just focus on, on, you know, the life of the music and, and the love for, for just entertainment. You could escape from things for a little bit on that ship. And I think, um, from, you know, from my perspective, what I see with you guys is that you take things, you know, John, I mean, you, you talked about this recognition of um, that people are focused on all sorts of divisive things, you know, but if we work together collectively, don't blame it or put it at the hands of a politician, but really bring it in house. You know, if you work local, that really is the best place for it to affect change anyway, right? So the yeah. fact, I, I think, uh, I tell my my kids that a lot. As my kids got older and they were able to vote, I told them how important it was because they felt like you know, a lot of younger people weren't voting for a long time because they felt like their voice didn't matter in the grand scheme of things, like their vote didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I said yes. that, that the way to make it matter is to work locally, right? If you work in your city and your community and work at that level up to the state, that's where you get the greater power of all those people moving together. Yeah, you're not going to make you know Congress level sort of impact unless you start local. But uh, I mean, that's what your show has been, really, Nicole, and that's really like yeah. using your voice for something that positive. Well said, and I just think that I mean, there's so many stories to tell. So whether it's through music or a TV segment or just a conversation at dinner, I think it's just um, the world's kind of missing that right now. We're all like on our phones and like looking down, like just go anywhere and look at anybody. It's like your neck goes up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? right. like, we are still the same build here. So let's look up and I'm trying myself, you know, we're all, we're all glued to our phones. But um, someone told me the other day, a good friend of mine said, I think we peaked in the nineties, like as a civilization. And I was kind of thinking about that <laughs> the last couple of days. I totally agree. Yeah. The nineties were awesome like we had pagers and cell phones cool but i wasn't like playing games on my phone i wasn't like disconnected i was using it to be connected you know what i mean and not sure. be like anxiety depression how we're all just kind of you know using our phone as some help but it's not um yeah. so i don't know uh, well, it's, just, it's just something interesting to think about and john and i one thing we do always try is at least once a week to plan a dinner with someone like once a week like even yeah. if it's call my mom, let's go to dinner or call a friend or it just makes you feel good and healthy and, you know, um, yeah. doing something because we're all busy. Kevin, we want to have dinner with you and, and your girlfriend. 
Yeah, yeah, Kim has been talking about that ever since. We wanted to give you time after the wedding, you know, yes. to be able to come. But you know, the the thing that's great about that is that you get perspective, right? You're around another couple, you're around other people that sort of inspire you to think differently, or or you know, experiences you've had. I was going to yeah. ask you about inspiration, Nicole. Like, what was the last piece that you did on your show that felt you walked away thinking, "Oh my gosh, I'm inspired." That was it. it really impacted you in a positive way. There was, oh gosh, I mean, every day, but there was this cute little girl recently who um, was uh, in a pageant up in Canada, Miss Universe Canada. And I spoke with her, Amelia Two is her name. I spoke with her about two weeks ago and she said, Nicole, I'm so excited. I've been practicing. I've got my questions down, my my outfits down. I'm, I just, I'm really excited at this opportunity. She's 20 years old. Fast forward through the weekend, she won. I was like oh. so excited for her. I mean, she was one of like 40 contestants, you know? So I, I was so privileged to have spoken to her before and felt her energy and her excitement. And um, what was really cool is seeing a young person who was 20, who was like, I want this thing. I'm gonna work towards this thing. I'm gonna get a coach. I'm gonna practice and just give it a shot. Cause what's the worst that happened? Right. You, still, you had an awesome time at Miss Universe. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of, I mean, and John's, you know, seen me through so many years. I, um, it, it's, I, I guess I didn't really realize it until someone told me, but I just kind of try stuff, even though I am probably scared of everything. <laughs> John knows he walks around the corner and I scream. I'm very jumpy as a person, but, um, you know, he goes, there's two people that live here. <laughs> so I'm always like, but I do tend to try stuff every now and then. I don't even know why or why. I, I think I have to force myself and you just feel better when you try. Yeah. You know, it feels it, good. Do, John, do you do that on purpose? Do you just like sit around the corner and try to scare her just as... <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> yeah. I, I, I love to kind of scare her and uh, it gives me a, a good opportunity to, to comfort her and hug her and squeeze oh, her. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, the makeup part of that uh, relationship sounds good. Exactly. Oh, exactly. my God. Yeah. Setting up a more intimate moment. Yeah, Which, right. <laughs> uh, well, th so aside from like your once a week date night where you actually go out with a couple, what does date night look like for you guys? What do you guys plan to do when you just want to unplug from work and, and just be able to escape? Well, we call our local Thai food restaurant and we go over and pick up the food and bring it home and we mix a, uh, a cocktail or a glass of wine and we just kind of chill out. What's that's your kind favorite? Of, that's kind of our go-to date night recently, but you know, now that things are opening up, um, you know, we want to get out and have fun and, and you know, live live the, uh, the excitement of the world and, and with friends and, and family and and mix it up. But we don't really have any any real go to date night, although we did go to a movie in the theater last weekend, for the first time in about three years. So that was it, it had to have been Top Gun, right? No, it wasn't out yet. Oh. I, we, <laughs> we, went, we went and saw Downton Abbey. Oh, <laughs> did you? We're kind, of, we're kind of old fashioned in that way, but it was very uh, heartfelt, funny, sentimental, you know, all the great yeah. Abbey attributes. We, we loved it. It was really good. You know, my, one of my favorite places. Uh, so my band, right. Is, they're from Liverpool originally. Yeah. When we were just on tour over there, as we travel through the Midlands there in England, it's right where that's filmed. And it, it blows me away every time. It's so wow. stunning. It seems unreal, right. To be able to see that, that kind of area. But, uh, but I'm sure the movie was great. Uh, you know, I was thinking about just, you know, for you guys, because you have a very spirited life. I mean, I know that you had a, you've done a lot of travel together. Um, you know, I, and I really, Nicole, I haven't talked to you about this much, but I've known John long enough to know that, uh, every time his brothers within, you know, a few States, um, you know, John, it seems like, you know, you're able to travel, it, even if it's not local, I know that you've gone and seen kiss all over the world. Um, but, um, when you guys are out together, Nicole, I know that you've been to plenty of these shows now. So was it, is it just bizarre when you first got into that relationship to see the machine behind the Kiss sort of empire? Well, it's so cool. I remember where I was standing in four at my old house. And uh, John Thayer, here he is. He turned to me. He goes, I got style to tell you. My brother just joined the band Kiss. I'm pretty wow. sure it was like 2003, 2004. It was early 2000s and I remember where I was standing and I'm like what like what are this is amazing and so through the years we have gone to 
a lot of shows. One memorable one was up in Ridgefield years ago, John. Remember that? Maybe that was the 04 show. And when he had just joined the band, they were with Poison touring. And John rented out a Raz bus here in Portland and got, <laughs> tell him what you did. You put paper on the side of the bus and wrote the Kiss Logue, Kiss or Bust or something. And we all drove up to, there was like a hundred of us on this bus. I was wow. underage, passing out the alcohol, you know. It was so, it was just so fun and it was your mom's 80th birthday that night and we wow. all honored her it was so cool yeah just mm -hmm. really special the uh, the band um had a big cake uh, we had a little birthday party before the show and the band joined in and we had a birthday cake and sang happy birthday to my mother and oh. we blew up the candles we got a lot of photos and then of course during the show paul stanley did a shout out to our mother which was really cool Right. My, mom, my mom is she was just so thrilled you know it was a big big evening for her and to see her son up there on stage and to be recognized um you know in her golden years it was pretty special yeah what i mean what a precious thing you know um uh, you know whenever i know for me there have been a few times that my folks have gotten to see me up on stage since the old days uh i just talked to somebody about this that my dad the first time he saw me play since the 90s he was at a show in phoenix and I remember crying on stage because I looked at his expression on the side of the stage and, you know, there's no crying in rock and roll. You know, it, it looks ridiculous, you know, but uh, but it was like one of those childhood memories or childhood sort of dreams realized. And I can imagine, you know, it doesn't get any bigger than that. I'm sure you had to have been just incredibly proud, but not surprised. I mean, Tommy had been working with, with Gene and Paul for a long time. And so it was really no, I, I don't think it was a, a major surprise, right, that he just assumed that role after the amount of work he did. You know, I think um, I think Tommy maybe had a hunch that someday maybe he'd get the call. You know, quick story, we were over in uh, Maui on, on a family vacation, and Kiss was playing the um, one of the medal ceremonies at the Salt Lake City Winter Olympics, and I think it was 2004, maybe, maybe three. And um, Tommy uh, was kind of helping the band in the back background and doing a lot of work for the band uh, on the backside. But Doc McGee, the Kiss manager, renowned manager, um, called Tommy from Hawaii in Hawaii, and he said, "Tommy, uh, Ace Freely is missing. We need you to get to Salt Lake City by tomorrow morning because we may need to suit you up." And Tommy was always kind of the understudy, so he did have a, a spaceman outfit already tailored for him just in case, but didn't know if it would ever happen. So anyway, he flies to Salt Lake City, cut short his family vacation, which was kind of a bummer. And he gets there, and he's all suited up, and he's doing the makeup, and he's all ready to go out and play, you know, in front of the national ABC audience. And all of a sudden, Ace Freely walks in. Uh. And he says, hey, guys, I'm ready to rock. Oh, no. <laughs> they put, the story goes that they put they put Ace on stage, and that was his final show with Kiss. And after that show, they fired him. Again, this is hearsay, but I think it's the way the story came down. And they hired Tommy, and a month later, he played a show in Cuba at a, uh, a Russian oligarch's million-dollar birthday party. That was his first show. Armed guards everywhere. He's kind of kind of a funky situation. And then they traveled over to Australia and they did the Kiss Symphony in Melbourne with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. And that was his first initial uh, indoctrination as a full fledged member of Kiss. And then uh, they came back to Las Vegas and they did a show at the Palm. And we all went down. The whole family, oh. friends, everybody. We had this big backstage thing, and it was really, really special. It was the, really the first time we'd seen Tommy play live with Kiss. So it was. It was pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, man. I would imagine there's like some real sibling pride going on there. Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. I, I'm really glad you brought up Doc McGee. And this is this is something I wanted to ask you about, Nicole. Yeah. People that don't know Doc McGee might be completely like amazed at the power that that guy has got, right? So yeah. if, if um, I'll never forget the first time I met him and, uh, you know, at that there was a show that uh, that your brother had asked Dan Pred to get um, to be a part of John uh, to go in and shoot the electronic press kit for their European tour, and Dan had me come in and help just to help facilitate some of the stuff with the crew, and I accidentally walked in on Doc doing some business, and I, I've never been more afraid uh, for my life. But that guy, <laughs> that guy, has this energy where he walks behind you, and you don't have to see him. You could feel the just this incredible wave of electricity 
He's probably one of the most powerful men in all of the inter- entertainment business, for sure. And he is so funny. That guy is hilarious, man. And I know the way you are, Nicole, just like a, a bundle of energy. I would imagine you guys have had some hilarious stories out there on the road. Has, have you guys yeah. had some heckle? I mean, I would say it's more at some of the charity things we do that Doc flies out for. Um, he's just always, he's a connector too. So this is what I really like is connectors in the community. It's not like, look at me or look at this guy. It's like, you should meet him and he should meet you and then we're going to do good. And so I see a lot of him. It's almost like deal making, like, like at charity events and like, yeah. he'll put, like put a prize together, some, you know, auction item that we didn't think of. And all of a sudden it goes for the highest amount. And we're like, thank you. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just always appreciate, um, and John as well, just his support of Tommy and what he does um, on his off time. You know what I mean? He's, um, they're all dear friends, so it's pretty cool. That You know, the charity stuff, I'm glad you bring that up, too. I mean, it's amazing to me how much Tommy has done. It really, I, I love seeing it, you know, seeing what he's done for local charities here in the Portland area. I know he does stuff outside. You guys have had, um, you know, the sort of tribute to your father. I mean, General Thayer's, um, you know, hit the facility that's here in, in Portland is is incredible. Um, the unveiling of that or sort of the uh, the ribbon cutting of that. I know that, that you guys were all a big part of that. And I think KISS also had something to do with the, the unveiling, right? Well, uh, was it Gene, Kiss, maybe? Yeah, Gene and Paul were yeah. involved in helping us raise money to help fund the, uh, the museum, which is part of Camp Wythicum, which is the central area for the Oregon National Guard. They kind of moved all the ancillary uh, guard units into one major facility. But there's a wonderful museum that we've helped as a family and and, and Tommy's uh, friends, uh, Kiss, Gene and Paul, have come to Portland at least two or three times to do help, help do fundraisers and uh, raise quite a bit of money to help put that uh, museum on the map and really make it a first class, world world class uh, military museum. Kind of highlighting the uh, the history of the Oregon National Guard and the Oregon military. And then I might add, uh, Kevin, the Thayer brothers uh, started a, a family foundation about a year and a half ago. We had our opening uh, fundraising event last September up at my brother Mike and his wife Christie's uh, Pete's Mountain Vineyard, and we raised over a half million dollars. Uh, to help um, fund um, homeless veteran, uh, help, help them uh, with their housing and, and uh, transitional housing to get back on their feet. And that was a real success. And we're just continuing with the Thayer Family Foundation to uh, help the needy, um, help veterans, and help first responders who, who really um, have had, had a tough go or maybe have been dealt a, a bad hand and they, they need help. Yeah. Not, not not the end game, but a transition to get them back on their feet. I sure, mean, that's the key. I mean that uh, we certainly have seen a lot of folks that are like that. That are you know that they don't have the voice to be able to get out there and and sort of make their voice heard. And I love it that your organization, you know, that the the Thayer Family for, um, Foundation has been able to make a difference that way. You know, uh, Mike and Christy, I think I'd mentioned to you, it's it's great that, uh, you know, I'd been working with uh, Pete's Mountain Winery there for, for a bit uh, with their yeah, web work and marketing. I so. really didn't know that until you mentioned it earlier today. That's great. And did you say you did some work for the foundation or, or more for the Pete's Mountain? Yeah, no, so they had, uh, Christy actually um, reached out to me to help out with the foundation webpage as well. So yeah, it was okay. it was an, it was an honor to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, sure. I'm uh, happy to volunteer my time with any of that kind of stuff. Because I think it's that really needs to be, you know, um, people more more people that can get uh, become aware of what you guys are doing. I think is important. I didn't put the link up here, but uh, if if you do, folks, if you're watching this and you can search uh, Thayer Family Foundation, you'll see that there's a it's a great organization providing resources for some some people really in need. Uh, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff that we could cover. You know, in terms of charity, I think. Uh, I've seen, John, I've seen you involved in, in quite a bit of charity over the years and, and your brother for sure. Uh, you guys collectively, you know, when I think about you guys as this quote unquote power couple, you know, because Nicole, I mean, you really, you talked about Doc being the connector, but really that's the way I've seen you from day one. Uh, you know, do you kind of, um, do you sort of brainstorm ways that you can work together to sort of work with your community this way, just the two of you? sometimes things come up we like to walk our little chihuahua and we you know plan things out but no i mean life happens and and sometimes you meet people 
um, and you're supposed to meet them and it's the right time or it's not the right time and then the right time comes and you connect them. I just feel like um, there's just so many amazing people here in the Northwest and it's it's pretty cool. I've seen through the years um, through working with Blake Sakamoto as well um, at all of his New Year's Eve events. We did for 10 years in a row a New Year's Eve event and he gave to charity you know, each year. And these would be at huge ballrooms in Portland and and he and I would work together. He was the whole booker. He did everything. I showed up and was a little MC helper. But um, but I was always very inspired by him and um, John's family, of course. Just people who, if I'm going to do an event, I'm going to do a thing. There, why not have a charitable element to it? Yeah. We're going to get together. We're going to have fun, and you feel so much better driving home knowing that you helped someone. You know, not just that was a great dinner. It's like, yeah. and the great dinner helped someone. Like it just it feels. It feels better because we're all very um, just blessed to, to be living in such a beautiful place and know such nice people. And if we can give back, um, why not? So, yeah. yeah. And, and Nicole's a real proponent of, of giving back. You know, she's always um, saying, John, we've got to donate to this. We've got to donate to that. Let's send a card or let's log in and, and make our donation, even if it's a smaller amount. Uh, Nicole's always reminding me that that's important and we need we need to do that. Yeah. Even if, again, it's a small charity or even, again, a small donation on our part, we try to do that as much as possible. But I know I know that Nicole's um, that's that's near and dear to her heart is giving back and giving giving to other people and helping other people. And so um, I really appreciate that about her. It's well, nice to I, be inspired. Right. I started yes. like Something weird. I think I started it like two years ago that and it's not like we travel all the time, but, you know, we go places every now and then we got jobs, but we go places. And I started this thing where if we go somewhere, we have to give back in that community. Yeah. So like we went to Maui, I, I made a donation to the Maui food bank, or if we go to the beach for the weekend or whatever, and these aren't like huge donations. It just yeah. feels good to be like, we are here and we have three days off work and it's so cool. So let's put in a few dollars and help a local organization. And it makes it kind of fun. And yeah. then at the end of the year, I realized I was on all these really weird mailing lists. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what's this organization? <laughs> You know, this place, in, this church in Palm Springs was sending me all that. I'm like, oh, yeah, we donated to those people. Yeah, and these are not, this is nothing to brag about big donations, but it's just something, and it makes you feel like if I have the day off and I'm sitting in sunshine with a palm tree, I'm going to give something to the local food bank. Uh, because the, I like this tree. You know, <laughs> you know? what? I mean, that, uh, the, honestly, that says so much. That, uh, there is something really important about service, right? You know, in your, your community, and there are so many people that would never even think about that until you just mentioned it. You know, the fact that you just bring it up, like, somebody that blew my mind that way, um, uh, John and Valerie Day from New Shoes, right? When we were out, we did a show in uh, the Dominican Republic and they were out, they had an organization that they work with called Pack for a Purpose. And so they found uh, schools, local schools in Punta Cana that had really, I mean, it was an underdeveloped country and they had just been decimated with hurricane. And so the they organized uh, this gathering for all of these people that were part of this big 80s event to get school supplies together. And then you organize, you bring the school supplies to, um, out to these schools and you donate them to these kids. And all of these kids, the K through 12, there is some really amazing Portland connection to this. We got there and these kids were sobbing, crying, because you gave them ballpoint pens. And they were so excited to have pens and, and spiral notebooks but a bunch of these kids at the school had Damian Lillard jerseys. Oh, they had cool. no shoes on their feet. They had, you know, basically just like they were completely destitute. But they had Lillard jerseys. And I was like, where did these come from? And the school administrator said, yeah, you know, he doesn't ever ask for attention. But he sends us jerseys all the time over from, from Portland. And this guy didn't know that we were from Portland. And I just, I was so proud of Portland and Damian Lillard from Portland Trailblazers. Wow. For he didn't call attention to himself. He just knew that these kids were in need, and so he sends over a bunch of jerseys just to help them out. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, when yeah. when that happened, Valerie and John started this cycle where the promoter for this event every year now finds these schools, and that never would have happened if it wasn't for them. And so yeah. organizations like that, and people like you who are out there sounding that that uh, that bell, all it takes yeah. is just one person to help you know make and a huge difference. Can't give five dollars like yeah. it's not a big deal it's not like you have to be i mean that's what trust me have these places i've given like 10 or 15 bucks but it's like you know it's just something kind of fun it's like and you get to know these these different organizations and everything helps i mean the whole world is a group project right like if we yeah. don't help each other 
this this group project is going to fail. So it's like we got to we got to be be helping each other out, even if it's super small and you can just build on that. So I don't know. Have nice. fun. You know. mentioned earlier, if everybody does their, their part, and even if it's a small thing, if everybody does that on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, it could change the world. I am so with you. One person at a time. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, John, the, the focus on the positivity, if um, if you don't mind, I would love to share that the new video that you talked about, uh, Make It Together, where yes. everybody's working together. If uh, if it's cool, this is, I think this may be like an internet world debut here. So, uh, yes. folks, uh, all right, the first time you're, you're seeing this. It's the first time we've ever shown, shown the video in public. So, and, and, and where did you shoot this, by the way? You've got some really cool footage. Um, you know, I, I worked with Rob Daker, who's been a dear friend. You know Rob very well. Of course. And, uh, Rob... Um, helped me co-produce and engineer the song and the video. And it was kind of a combination of different places. Uh, we pulled, you know, pulled footage from uh, some different sources. But anyway, I think the video awesome. kind of speaks for itself. And I think it sends a real positive message. It's not, it's not all um, fun and games of the world we live in. But I think the message of the video is we need to love each other and we need to come together and be more inclusive and really just help each other out more than maybe we have in the past. I love it. All right, folks. So here it is. Make it together. John Thayer. Get it. 
Heck yeah. Oh my gosh, man. I, uh, I really, I, I loved seeing so many familiar faces there, but John, mm -hmm. everything you just talked about inclusivity and, and just, um, you know, overcoming, you know, all the stuff that we're, we're struggling with these days, man, that was absolutely inspiring, buddy. You should be proud. Thank you. You got, you had a super hot chick in that breakdown too. I noticed that, man. She, uh, Darcy yeah. looks so cute, doesn't <laughs> well, yeah. you know, Darcy's hot too, but you're hot. You're hot. You're hot. You're hot. Yes, yeah, yes. Oh, you are. Uh, right there, Tori White, Tracy Stepp, Jeremiah Stroop, Brandon Cook, as you saw. I mean, it was a good group. And Rob Baker. I mean, you can't yeah. go wrong with all these people. They're so nice. Yes. You know, John, I think you and I have talked about this before. There's a magic thing that Rob Dacre has. There's not a thing that that guy touches that doesn't sound just perfect. You know, he really has – there's an art to what he does, and, man, that guy's got it. So I, I, I was so excited to have him on this show as well because he really came out of his shell on the show. He really – you know, some, sometimes he's sort of aloof. You know, we talk about that a little Tell bit. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but but he wasn't on the show. He really opened up a bunch, and it was it was fun to see. But it's great to see you guys work together. That that production is phenomenal. When are you actually going to release that single? Well, we're we're coming up with a, a plan on how to release it and, and where to release it. But probably in about two weeks. Okay. We Finalized. There's still a couple little minor edits to finish up, but we're really close. And um, you know, we just want to get it out there and spread the word and have have people share it if if they want to if they find meaning in the, in the video and the message, share it with friends and family, and hopefully we can spread some love and, and some, you know, inclusiveness and um, maybe it'll make a small difference in the world. Yeah. I, I can suggest right now, having been at the TEDx conference last weekend, that's yeah. right in line with everything they're presenting. So uh, presenters uh, and, and uh, promoters for TEDx Portland, make sure that you check out that video and get a hold of John Thayer because 2023, man, we need to see you up there for sure. Yeah, That'd be awesome. Are you do you uh, do you have any interest in touring at all? Absolutely. Yeah, like sure, you know, I'd love to. You, but it would have to be together, right? You guys have to work on the projects. Do you guys have some stuff that you're working on collectively, music wise as well? No, let John do his thing. I'm going to show up for the shows though. I want to be dancing on the stage. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we have a lot of original material and kind of a backlog that I'll be releasing over the next year or so. Nicole and I collaborated, you know, 15 years ago and produced a wonderful record. It, I'm really, we're both very proud of it. It's, it's an EP called Escape and, and great songs, great pop sensibilities. Um, Nicole sings and, and helped produce. Um, but I think in the future, we'll probably do more together. But I also have a, um, a band that I've kind of loosely played with over the last few years. And we've started to incorporate more cover music to, you know, get out and play just more fun stuff. But my passion is really the, the original music and I want to get out and play more and, and love to tour if the opportunity presented itself. Do you yeah. have a buck? Do you have a bucket list venue that you'd want to play, John? Like where's the one place in the world that you want to play? Probably uh, the Royal Albert Hall in, in London. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, be I, I'll be there for that one. I'm going to roll up in a, in a double decker bus. <laughs> yeah, I'd, like, I'd like to, I'd like to say Wembley stadium, but let's, let's start with something more realistic. Yeah. Well, they're, they're completely different venues, man. Right. So I, I think uh, I could see uh, the Royal Albert hall being a, a very classic, you know, very dignified. I, I think that's a good spot for you for sure. You could bring that message there and probably affect a lot more people that way. 
Sure. And a lot of my recordings that I'll be releasing this next year, some that I've already released, I had a string quartet, um, you know, as backing for a lot of a lot of the tracks that I've written. And as Nicole mentioned earlier, it just adds a warmth and, and a, a sensibility and, and a sense of emotion that you don't get with just a more traditional rock rock band. So yeah, really, I've always loved strings, cellos, violins, and try to incorporate that in, into my music as much as possible. And that's why we, you know, we hired the, the string quartet for our wedding because we really value that type of music. Man, I want to have that quartet with me at all times. Can I just have them? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, I, so good. They would I'd make you walking to your car at night. Oh, oh, every like, meeting, so yeah. accompanying all my client meetings in the background, you know, and I think, yeah, like serenading me to sleep. I think for sure. Oh, remember like the Goo Goo Dolls and Aerosmith and, those are all like fun, like rock bands. And then they added some strings to the song. Yeah. Hit. I mean, and they they all fought it. Like, I don't want strings on this song. And those are their biggest hits. Like, it's like, you must lean into the strings, you know, for those like ballad rock songs. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, man. They're not, they're, not, they're not meant for every song, obviously. But for certain yeah. songs, I think it's it's a good, um, it creates a good, a nice element and, a, and, a, and some warmth and some emotion that you don't get otherwise. Yeah. Well, it moves people, you know, and that's the whole thing. If you're, I, for me, I think any style of music or any messaging, it just, if it's moving, you know, then it's, it's quality, yeah. you know, like it's, 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 I guess in, in that sort of vein, um, I ask people a lot of times on this show about legacy and, uh, you know, I think being moved, um, one of my favorite sayings ever, I, I think, um, a lot of people on my show have heard me say that Jim Carrey had given this commencement speech years ago to these marketing students and said to these people that are learning about going out and making money, right? They're, they're learning about business. He said, I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Oh, right. the, yeah. The, the effect you have on others is the greatest form of currency there is. Yeah. My favorite, favorite saying for sure. And, and that's certainly how I see, you know, the way that you guys have treated people and, and the, the people come away from the experience with you just feeling really, really good. Um, as far as legacy goes, Nicole, when you're, you know, a hundred years from now and you're, uh, when you're looking back at your life and, uh, and people have n known Nicole, what do you want to be remembered for? What's your legacy? Wow. This is uh, hitting pretty hard here on a Wednesday yeah. dinner time. That's uh, right. See, my legacy. I just want to make people feel good. Make them yeah. laugh, make them open up. I mean, even when I'm interviewing folks, it's not about me. Like I'm trying to get you to tell a good story. Like I just want to make people comfortable and happy. And if I made you laugh a little and you actually remember me in a hundred years, I think I've done my job. <laughs> I, I, I have no doubt. There's not a person that's met you that hasn't remembered you for sure. Yeah, I think. I, that's so crazy. I don't know. I, I don't mean to make it super profound or really make because I, sometimes that comes off as seeming pretentious when I ask about that. It's not that I, I want you to feel like, you know, you've got to say something that makes you yeah. sound. But I I, uh, I definitely like to know what sort of guides people, you know, in, in their, yeah. their activities. And so, John, um, you've got a ton of family legacy, you know, but in terms of, like, identifying your own, what is it that you'd like people to remember you for? Well, I had a few minutes to kind of think about it. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've employed a lot of individuals over the years and, you know, I have great family and so many great friends, but I think what I've always been most prideful of is helping other people to become better individuals. And, you know, I think I learned a lot from my dad and my mother and, and really and they both imparted a lot of wisdom on me. And I've been pretty, um, pretty sensitive person over the years and, and really listened a lot and just picked up um, the right um, morals and principles in life. And I'm not perfect, believe me, but I, I try to stay the course and so just trying to help people to become better and yeah. maybe impart some of my wisdom, some of the things that I've learned over the years, some, sometimes the hard way. Um, I've learned lessons and I, I try to teach in, in different ways, not necessarily a direct conversation, but just maybe different pointers or different things that I've imparted in conversations. Just tried to teach people uh, some of the wisdom and experience that have helped me to become a better person. And hopefully my legacy would be you know, having it made, having made a difference in, in helping people enrich their lives mm. I guess would probably be the best way to sum it up. Those are good bullet points, man. I like that. You, uh, I like that. yeah, yeah me too. John's so good. He gives everyone like a chance, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you apply to work for him or you would like, we go places and he becomes friends with the waiter and then he's like, you know, and it's, mm. we go somewhere and by the end of the day, we know everyone's name and we're all like, Oh, Judy, see you later. And it's like, Who's Judy? Oh, the lady I just met in the bathroom. You know what I mean? It's like we 
I don't know. We, we really enjoy, you know, meeting people. And John is always very, um, it, patience is really a cool thing. You know, he's very patient with people. And sometimes, whether it's an employee or a friend of his that's going through a tough time, he'll listen. And he's just patient. And um, that's all you want in a friend or a, oh. or a boss or a coworker. You know, you just want to be heard and, and given a chance because we all have bad days, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I do like that both of you guys have talked about not not being perfect. But, John, I mean, that's got to feel good that, that Nicole reveres you, right? She's made these, these uh, you know, like, adul- like uh, adulations about how – you know, your qualities are in terms of patience and, and, and being kind and courteous. Uh, what are some qualities that you just, you think that set Nicole apart that you would, you would. Uh, well, Nicole, um, first of all, she's, I always said she's personality plus. Mm. She's so vibrant and so energetic and she always makes great conversation and she's funny as hell. Yeah. So those are some of the qualities, but the, the best, most important quality to me is her, She's a real uh, passionate person. She's she's very much of an em- empath. She wears her heart on her sleeve. Uh, her tears are not far far away at any time. She like really right cares. now, right she, now. She really cares about other people, and she has such strong feelings uh, coming from the heart. Yeah, I've always really appreciated about that about her. She's very honest, and she's also very dependable. I'm blessed. What more? Yeah. Can- ask for in a partner in life somebody who's got compassion heart uh, and, and is honest and has integrity and and you can depend on that person yeah uh, that's, uh, that's all you need. really i mean if you were going to list all the things that you wanted because john you like you said you've employed a lot of people and you know what qualities you're looking for in terms of an employee or somebody to work with but yeah, if you were if you were gonna list on uh, on your dating application what you're looking for, yeah, I think I think she dotted all the dot, she, she checked, checked all the boxes. Yeah, all the boxes. I They're like so, that. So fortunate and so blessed. Oh, I was gonna play off the uh, the patience thing. How John's so patient, and so you know. He, he was Not pretty always. patient. He was pretty patient in that waiting to ask me to get married. It was a lot of years. <laughs> but yeah. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying, it just went through my mind that it was so funny. He's just so good, you know. Um, no, that was so sweet. Thank you. That's really nice. Yeah. It, it, I like, too, that, that you didn't have to think about it, John. You know, when I asked, you know, you, you really didn't have to, to sit and – um, one thing I loved about the wedding, the, the reception, where you guys did honor each other in terms of like your history and the connection that you guys had. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people right now that are looking for relationship connectivity. You know, they're looking for that one. And I, I hope that people get to see the qualities that you can have in each other. More than anything, I see a lot of respect. I see, you know, not only adoration, but respect. You know, I think that uh, that you can see that there's great communication between you two. I have no doubt that uh, your relationship is going to blossom and flourish, and hopefully, you know, some other people can sort of, you know, derive a little bit of uh, inspiration from that too. I think, the, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys can be relationship coaches if nothing yeah. else works out for no, you. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is too much. No, well, one thing that is that is good for us though is that we both are artsy fartsy people. You know, like we both love, you know, music. And I'm, I'm a writer. I was a journalist for so many years, and now working at the TV station and on all that stuff. We both, you know, allow each other to shine in different ways. So it's not like, here's John and Nicole. It's like, it's John's night. Go play your show. Do your thing. I'm so proud. And then if I'm doing something, he shows up and supports me. It's like, uh, that's what I hope for everyone is that, you know, you can find someone that will support you. And it's not about this person's up here and this person. No, just be your, be a pal and be a good a, you know, person and show up and, and be supportive because we've all dated folks before. I'm sure that you couldn't depend on, or they, mm-hmm. they wouldn't show up or you weren't sure, you know, the mood or and, and if I do this, is that going to make you, are you okay uh-huh. with that? You know, it's like, this is what I do. You gotta, you know, and John, we just, we just have fun and try to just be there for each other. Like he'll work on something for like a month and go, what do you think? I'm like, Oh, this is so cool. You know I mean? I like, I've been hearing that song for weeks, you guys. Yeah, it's <laughs> a great song. It's so hooky too, man. I really that uh, and is, that, yeah. that middle eight, that breakdown part. Yeah, that's that one's that one's gonna stick around for a while. Right here. Man, that I, I uh, well, I can't 
I really uh, I can't wait to see what it does. I'm, I'm sure that people are going to see the releases at JohnThayerMusic.com, right? So we can mm-hmm. when uh, when that one gets released, and I'm sure you'll have it on all the streaming and download platforms. And yep. and uh, and uh, Nicole DaCosta, your up and coming activities we can find at NicoleDaCosta.com. Is that right? Yep, exactly right. The world's opening up again. We used to MC a lot, and I was involved with so many charities and through the pandemic as well. But mostly, it was on Zoom. So as things get back to normal, I'm excited to to keep the NicoleDaCosta.com website updated. But really, just thanks. I mean, thanks for having us on, and thanks to everyone. Just you know, Everyday Northwest has been such a fun new show for me. And yeah, like I said, if anyone has story ideas, I'm I'm happy and, and open to listening. And um, just just pumped. So, yeah. I, I, I definitely, you have actually made me want to turn on the TV again to see as close to the news as I could possibly get with every day Northwest. So, um, <laughs> folks, if you got here late, guys, make sure that you go back. Um, you can go to accesskevin.com and actually see this right now. Um, looking forward to Monday. I've got Doug Wimbish from Living Color on my show. We're going to talk a little. Uh, one thing I found out recently, too, is that I had Sugar Hill Gang singer Master G on the other day. And Doug Wimbish, the bass player from Living Color, was actually in the Sugar Hill Gang back in 1979, 1980. So, Rapper's Delight, Apache, all those old, uh, those old original hip hop songs. So we'll, uh, we'll, and and they actually shared stages with uh, local Dan Reed Network, actually from back in the uh, the Rolling Stones tour. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of fun parallels. So, um, guys, all of these are going to be available at accesskevin.com. Make sure you go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and the bell, and you'll be uh, able to go back and look at all these other episodes. But from the beginning, Nicole, you were very supportive of the show. I really appreciate that. And uh, John, man, since day one, ever since I've met you, you know, you've been supportive of me. I've really enjoyed being able to uh, to be right there with you, you know, playing music and, and doing some uh, some graphic work with you. And mm-hmm. um, it's it's fun to watch watch uh, this this union, this power couple, flourish into you know something <laughs> majestic. So I I I I do see you that way because there's a, there's a lot that you can do together. You know that uh, mm-hmm. I, I am in, am inspired. So uh, you're inspiring us. Well, let's yeah. get together. We'll, well, we'll, yeah, we'll plan our dinner. Good stuff. Yeah, we're going to have the dinner and we can uh, expound on that. But Kevin, thank you so much. We My really pleasure. appreciate the opportunity today and appreciate your friendship uh, and the love and concern you've had from both of us over, over the years. Been a true My friend. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you guys again for watching. Nicole DaCosta, John Thayer, Ben, you guys are, are fantastic people. <laughs> have a great week, guys. Be good to each other. We're together. All right. Make, Peace. make it together. That's Woo! right. Make it together. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.